welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you guys my top five game-changing makeup tips that I learned personally for the year of 2021. I know that I have probably spoke about some of these makeup tips, but I've never put them all into one video. And no, these makeup tips are not from me because I'm not a makeup artist. These are actually makeup tips that I've learned from other makeup artists. I will leave a few content creators in the description box down below that I learned some of these tips from so that you guys can check out their channels and maybe learn tips and tricks from them. So before we jump into the makeup tips, this video is kindly sponsored by Lily Silk. Thank you to Lily Silk for supporting my channel and sponsoring this video. Lily Silk is a silk company. They have all kinds of silk products such as blouses, pajamas, pillowcases, bedding sets, scrunchies, which I'm kind of obsessed with. Just to name a few, they have a ton of things available on their website. Their products are made out of mulberry silk. Mulberry silk has a lot of benefits. It can benefit your skin and your hair, it can actually absorb moisture and it's breathable. It is anti-aging, so soft and so smooth. My husband and I have been sleeping on the king size silk pillowcases that it sent over and we're kind of obsessed. I've always heard everybody talking about sleeping on silk pillowcases. I don't know why I never tried it. One thing that I've noticed that I really did was not expecting, number one, my face is not as swollen when I wake up. So sometimes when I wake up, I'll have like these creases along my face from my pillowcase creasing. Well, I don't have that now since I've been sleeping on my Lily Silk. I sleep with my hair kind of up. Now I don't sleep with it like pulled up in a bun or anything, but I'm sleeping, I have my hair like this and like pulled up and over the pillow. And sometimes like these little baby hairs right here, I'll wake up and they'll just be like super fuzzy and I kind of have to take a straightener or a round brush and kind of smooth them out. But since I've been sleeping on the silk pillowcase, I don't have that problem. It's those small little things that I really wasn't expecting that really kind of blew me away with the silk pillowcases. So they are a must. I also have been obsessed with this. I can't tell you how many times I have tried these. Every single time I wake up, it's gone. I don't know how long it lasted, but it is completely off my face, okay? So when I got this, I was like, well, I'll give it a try, but who knows if it'll, you know, be there when I wake up. Sure enough, it was. The others that I have that are silk, the band is silk and it slips all over the head, right? So it doesn't stay on. It's slippery. With this, this band is a velvet band. So it actually adheres to the hair and it doesn't slip and slide all over my head. And so this is actually the first like face mask that I have used that actually stays on my face all night, which I'm quite impressed with to be honest because I didn't think that was possible. And I'm also loving these silk scrunchies. Out of everything that I've gotten, the silk pillowcases and these silk scrunchies, bomb. Like so good and I love the way my hair looks when I pull it up in the silk scrunchies. It makes the cutest top knot. Like that cute like messy bun, it just, I love them. I love these. Plus, because they're silk, they're really gentle on your hair and also they don't make my hair crease. So I can pull my hair, I could wear my hair up all day in a, in a bun and the next day pull it back down and I don't even look like I had it up in a bun. And because Lily Silk is sponsoring this video, they have offered my followers a 12% discount. The code is TaraLynn12 and you can save 12% off of everything on the Lily Silk website. And everything that I discussed today and everything that I have used, I will link in the description box down below. Thank you to Lily Silk for sponsoring the video. Let's go ahead and jump into my makeup tips. So the first one I have to talk about is color correcting. I never really understood the step, the need for that extra step of color correcting, but especially as I've aged, and if you're if you're aging and you've starting to get aging under eyes, this tip is going to be huge for you because color correcting before going in with concealer allows you to use less concealer. Therefore, you're using less and it will last and look so much better throughout the day. Find the right color corrector for whatever you are trying to correct because there are different 
um, tones for color corrector. I personally use the peach to correct the, my dark circles. My favorite affordable color correct is this one from LA Girl. I think it's like $3.99 or something like that. You can get it at Target, Walgreens, Ulta, like tons of different places. I have this one in the shade peach. It has a nice little brush tip on it. Just try it. Apply the thinnest amount, blend it out, and then go in with your concealer. And you will find that you're putting on less concealer, which is gonna make it look so much better because as we age, our under eyes and that skin under our eyes is just so thin. And as the years go by, that skin gets thinner and thinner. So the more products that you put on that, the heavier it's gonna be in that area. If you're gonna layer, you want light layers, but whatever you're layering, you want it to be effective. So highly recommend color correcting. Like it is where it's at, okay? It's, it's a, it is a big deal and I understand why people do it and now I'm in it. I love color correcting. It's kind of my thing. The second tip is putting on my eye makeup before putting on my concealer. So before I would just put on my full face of makeup and then move on to my eyes and over the last year, I started to put on my foundation, do my brows, and then do my eyeshadow. And then once I got done with my eyeshadow, I would clean up the area and then put on my concealer and then finish up with my eyeshadow on the lower lash line. And I have found that my eyes look so much better by doing that step, just that simple step. Even if you're using something that doesn't seem to have a lot of fallout, you're always gonna have a tiny bit of fallout. And being able to take a makeup wipe and just wipe a little bit in that area and kind of clean it up before going in with concealer, it's a game changer. It just cleans everything up. It looks much more polished than it does when you have all that eyeshadow that has fallen down and you're trying to cover it up or you might have to add more concealer, which is gonna just be layering and you know, kind of defeating the purpose. And what I also like about it is that it lifts. I can get a little bit carried away and I can really blend outside the lines because I know that I'm just gonna carve that out and just wipe it. And it also kind of creates that lift with the eyeshadow. So it's kind of a dual purpose tip because not only does it keep everything more polished and clean under there, but it also lifts that outer edge and kind of gives you a little bit of a lift, even if you are not even gonna wear a wing, whatever it is, it will just kind of lift that area. And then when you go in with concealer, it looks so much better because you can clean any of your mistakes up with your concealer and it is a game changer, you guys. I got into that routine where it was hard for me to kind of switch. Now that I have started doing this, there's no way I could go back to putting on my concealer and then doing my eyeshadow. There's just so many benefits to doing it after. You can use your concealer to clean it up. It, li it lifts your eyeshadow for you. It just kind of lifts that outer edge for you. It makes it nice and clean under here. Like the whole nine yards, you guys, it is amazing. Just try it and do it a few times. You'll never go back. It's amazing. Okay, tip number three. You guys know that I do not, I am not the best at wings, okay? I have a very hard time at doing wing eyeliner. I, everybody makes it look so damn easy and it's very hard for me, okay? I have tried it so many times and I just have the hardest time with a wing eyeliner. Trick is to take a brush like this, go down into your eyeshadow, okay? Line it up with your lower lash line right here at the at the very end and blink and then flick it and it will create a perfect lift without being a wing. This tip is great for those that want to lift the outer eye but without doing a wing. So I am that person that I'm not super comfortable with a wing nor am I comfortable wearing a wing. So even if I apply the perfect wing, I don't know that I feel all that comfortable wearing it. I don't know, it's just maybe it's because you have to get used to it, right? Try doing this because you can see that that gave me a lift without being a wing. So it lifts the eye, but you wouldn't look at me and say, oh, she's wearing wing eyeliner, right? No matter what your eye shape is, using your own lower lash line is going to give you the perfect lift for your eye shape. So no matter what your eye shape is, 
following your own personal lower lash line and and blinking and creating that soft wing effect with an eyeshadow it's amazing it's like the best trick ever with that and using the concealer to kind of clean that up and lift game changer those two alone in my opinion will take five years off those eyes that's just my opinion tip number four powder buffing so I know that you guys have heard me talk about this and I've spoke about it in several videos but I wanted to throw it in this video so that it's compiled into one so I've mentioned it before my friend Mel Thompson was the first that introduced me to powder buffing now I'm not sure where she learned it from but and I'm and I'm not saying that she created the the technique or anything like that what I'm saying is she is where I learned it from goal is using translucent setting powder to buff out any harsh lines on the face you want your bronzer and blush to be more seamless buffing is where it's at and I have dry normal skin and I normally do not like powder okay I'm not a huge translucent setting powder person but since I started doing the buffing technique I'm in love with it and I cannot do my makeup without it even when I'm wearing like a tinted moisturizer I'll go over the edges with my powder brush just to kind of make sure that it's more soft and seamless you'll notice here in this image so on one side of my face you can see as i'm buffing it completely removes all of those lines where i applied the bronzer and i applied the blush and if you look at the face side by side one side not buffed and the other side buffed you can see that the side that's buffed is so much more seamless and looks so much more polished than the side without and now that i have started buffing i can't go back and even if you have dry skin you only need the lightest amount of powder and you can use finishing powder you can use loose powder any powder that you have that that you feel comfortable with i've been told by a lot of people who have dry skin that this kosas uh comfy cloud set powder is amazing for buffing because you can just go into it tap off and any powder is going to work because all you're doing is you're allowing the powder to buff and blend all of it together to have it create one thing but you still have the dimension and no matter what your skin type is try buffing you guys it is fantastic and i will link mel's video in the description box down below she describes it in such a way and i love mel i haven't been able to watch that video i, I haven't been able to watch her channel i'm gonna be honest um i have a lot of marcos that i can't watch i'm just not there yet it's gonna take me a minute um but if you're curious to know more about the buffing technique i highly recommend watching her video because she just breaks it all down and there is something magical about buffing no matter your age no matter your skin type buffing will soften everything up it will soften all of your makeup and all of your applications just it makes it all seamless oh you guys buffing is where it's at <laughs> so tip number five so my eyes eat eyeshadow because i have such deep set eyes so you can see that i have all of this eyeshadow on but when i look straight i like all of that eyeshadow just disappears if you have deep set eyes like i do and you are applying a shimmer shadow bring it up and into the crease like take your brush dip it into that shimmer shadow and bring it all the way up and over and it will really open that eye up and i also think that looks really pretty on hooded eyes as well it kind of opens that eye as well there's something so beautiful about bringing the shimmer shadow up and into up and under that brow and just bringing it up and into the crease so this could go for both ways this, this could work for those with hooded and deep set based on my experience i am suggesting it and recommending it for deep set eyes so that's it you guys those are the five makeup tips that were game changers for me in the year of 2021 sound out down below in the comment section let us know any makeup tip that you learned that you want to share with us 
let's have a conversation let's help each other out you guys always have the best recommendations and I'm so excited and so curious to hear what you guys have learned in the year of 2021 that's helped change your makeup game so share with us in the comment section down below your tips and tricks thank you again to Lily Silk for sponsoring this video thank you so much for hanging out with me in today's video hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video love you bye